you guys don't have Taylor Ham, probably up where you are. Taylor what now? Taylor Ham? Yeah, you don't even know. You're like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, the greatest processed meat of all time. Oh, okay. <laughs> is it I anything guess... like uh, Devon or Spam? Sim- similar? It's kind of... It's kind of like spam, I guess, but it's not as uh, I feel like spam is really like, like you could, it's got kind like a oh, spongy. Yeah, it's got like an elasticity to it. Pork rolls, just like or Taylor ham, whatever you want to call it. Those are the alternate alternative names. Okay. Uh, it's mm. just a bunch of unidentifiable pink meat in a football shape, and you just cut it up, and it's like just uh, I don't. I'm trying to think of like the closest thing to it. I guess would be spam, but not as bouncy well yeah, right. we need we need to get down and play new jersey that's what we need to do <laughs> that's what we need to do you're gonna try and just be like this is revolting <laughs> <laughs> no, i really let like us it. let us astray with this this uh knockoff spam stuff <laughs> knock no it, it's good i i do enjoy it um yeah. it's like the greasiest thing and the saltiest thing that's ever yeah. existed so delicious um, but i don't know you guys could be vegan for all i know yeah. nope not but um <laughs> but I, I will try it i will try this this strange meat you speak of <laughs> sounds um, like this may turn us vegan i don't know we'll, we'll see <laughs> yeah, it could it very well could entry in the diary of doom i am your host dylan and join me as we look back on the rich history of doom metal and its sister sounds based on the recounted tales of its followers every week we'll have a different guest to spin their yarn you can visit the website at diaryofdoom.com follow us on instagram like us on facebook follow the podcast on diaryofdoom.podbean.com and subscribe and listen to the podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and wherever else you may stream them from. And if you have a question or whatever, you can fire off an email to diaryofdoom1968 gmail.com. Uh, joining us for this week's chapter, <clears throat> uh, we have uh, some some other guests from our uh, northerly neighbors up in uh, good old Canada, A, eh? uh, from uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. We've got Matador in house with us. Uh, and from the band, we have James and Scott. James is the guitarist and Scott is the drummer. And they are a uh, post-rock, post-metal uh, type band. They have a new album out. It just came out on uh, the 12th of November. It's called The Surge. Uh, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks, thanks so much for having, for having us. us. Yeah, yeah, great to be here. Oh talking some doom so yeah like new albums out um going around the uh the 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 circle the doom circles and whatnot um like i was saying the preamble popped up i was talking to jj from the obelisk about it but uh you know leading up to where you are now um you know i know you're a relatively new band um but you do have another album out but like what are your guys earliest experiences with music did you have musical upbringings or did you find it on your own or what have you i started playing drums when i was about 15 um and uh you know did like the school battle of the bands formed a band with my friends who were equally inexperienced um we just playing like nirvana covers and writing our own knockoff sort of originals that basically sounded like shitty nirvana covers <laughs> uh and then from there just kind of kept doing it and went through a stage where i went where i played sort of covers and stuff for a living did like the wedding band thing um and then yeah that didn't last uh went back to original bands and yeah i guess that's how i got started just the classic high school way of doing it you know it's yeah. like, i hate weddings <laughs> Yeah, I do. I do. I despise weddings and every playlist at them. <laughs> uh, yeah, and kind of, you know, similar journey for me, like, um, 
my dad played guitar so that was he got kind of got me into it like real early on like 10 11 uh you know first like shitty electric guitar when i was 12 and it was like the best thing ever and like yeah i think like um over the years my musical tastes like kind of just got heavier and heavier and heavier and here we are where we're at now so i don't know maybe a few years time we'll be into like you know something like extreme sludge core or something i don't know <laughs> but mm. like uh yeah going from yeah the same thing like the whole nirvana kind of grunge scene and you know into like the the kind of post rock stuff and now i think we're a bit more like well certainly me i i listen to a lot more of the you know the heavier side of things and do you guys have like you know a uh, like a specific album that you think kind of changed your perspective on how you would define heavy music and whatever or just like opened up your eyes to a different way of playing i definitely had a moment like that um because i was starting to get pretty into music you know sort of like towards the end of high school and i was listening to a lot of pearl jam and uh nirvana and metallica and whatnot but then i discovered uh lateralis by tool mm -hmm. and the drumming just was on a whole nother level compared you know i was going from lars no disrespect to Lars, obviously. Uh, but it's okay. He's, he's, he's like a great solid drummer and Metallica have a lot of good shit. But um, yeah, Lateralis is just insane. I'd never heard anything like it. Just like this crazy psychedelic space metal. Danny's just basically playing solos the whole time, but it somehow doesn't sound like too much. And uh, that just really inspired me to yeah, just want to stick with the drums and try and sort of work towards being more than just your average timekeeping drummer, try and play more melodic. And, you know, I spent a lot of time trying to mimic a lot of their grooves because he plays a lot of tribal sounding stuff, like a lot of polyrhythmic mm -hmm. grooves, which I've found, always found really interesting and super musical. So I spent a lot of time trying to, trying to mimic that and develop those kind of, kind of ideas. Definitely lateralis is like a pivotal, it's like my dark side of the moon, I would say terms of inspiration yeah yeah and I, don't, I don't know if there's one like particular like record for me but um i think that the start of this the sort of the the heavier side of things i guess was probably russian circles like from their like their very first um ep what is it uh carpe was it like way back so i'm in some tiny little club like touring that first record and it's just like shit this like and just three dudes right and it's just it's so huge and every time i've seen them they've just blown me away and like uh the way they kind of i guess balance like you know super delicate like pretty kind of atmospheric stuff with the just like yeah i guess they do i guess they do have a you know doom in there even though they may they may be categorized more like as post metal but um yeah and 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 it's you know more recently getting into um you know some of the old electric wizard stuff and um sleep mono lord and just those like those those just enormous like fuzz kind of walls of fuzz and just like right <laughs> let's go <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah <clears throat> just, and just you know just that that power at wind hand i saw them for the first time live a few years back and again just like one guitarist at the time and it's just like how does that sound so huge <laughs> um, i just saw them the other night again oh uh, sweet yeah, actually scott awesome. and i had we had tickets to see them and then covid stole them away from yeah. us and it, uh, yeah same yeah. here and and tool and a couple of other bands yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all got cancelled yeah. We got yeah well. <laughs> i was there for that too yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it was yeah. rough but you guys are uh you know shows are back on properly uh in the u.s right for the time being you know yeah. well, uh, right now i mean i'm you know i'm i'm happy that i'm you know in new york where things are you know pretty operational and good uh but you know you never know what's gonna happen yeah. and so yeah. i yeah. I'm I'm certainly enjoying my time at them. Let's put it that way, because who, I, I I it would suck if everything had to go on hold again. And it kind of yeah, does cool. look like there's some stuff already going on hold. You know, just you know, like at it, whether it's just like oh this popped up today or we just don't feel comfortable or whatever the fuck it is. So yeah, it's all real complicated now. What with uh, new strains and 
all this kind of stuff and just the virus continues to spread. <laughs> yeah. Virus is stupidity too, but yeah, I digress. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but to your, you know, to your point about that. Yeah. I mean, a band like Russian circles and, you know, ISIS and like, and th- that kind oh, of yeah. shit. Like I, yeah. I know, I know like, you know, Aaron Turner, like loves metal and stuff like that, but I don't know if that dude ever really set out to just like make heavy metal, you know, he made fucking heavy music, oh, but yeah, it's yeah. certainly a lot different than a lot of the other, you know, metal that was coming out. I mean, it, it's just like, it's just not as uh, boneheaded. And then, you know, with mm. Russian circles too, it's, it's heavy, but it's not. And, and those dudes certainly love their metal too, but they, uh, they know how to create a, a unique sound and like a ridiculously big sound for yeah. three people. And that's mm. what I think is really impressive by a lot of these bands is that you really have to work your fucking asses off. Like, you know, you, you, you three in, included, especially if you're not doing any vocals, you know, obviously mm. I, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't think Russian circles has any vocals on no. their albums. I, you know, no, I, no. I could be wrong. But no, I, I don't think so. He, I don't even think they, uh, every time I've seen them live, I don't think I've heard any member of the band say a single word to the like, <laughs> and I kind of I dig it. It's just like let yeah. the music, you know, yeah. they don't have that. to come out with a statement or political, I, you yeah. know, opinions or anything. It's just let the music do the talking sort of thing, you know, just fucking melt everyone's faces and leave. So, can you talk about how the band came together? I was playing in another band in in vancouver and uh that kind of didn't work out and i had a bunch of um bunch of like ideas rolling around that i wanted to you know put into a, another project and uh so you know i got straight back onto the whole like okay let's find a band thing and craigslist and and just i jammed with so many people and um kind of didn't really have any luck so that first EP was kind of a bit of a um, kind of one man band kind of project just, just to kind of get some out ideas mm-hmm. out there and kind of off my chest and and to kind of use as bait almost to to form like that at all, like properly. And yeah, yeah. you know, like casting a line. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Um, and and, you know, it, it was like, I guess, a creative outlet as well at the time um just you know being able to just put this ep together like um rather than just kind of going crazy and getting frustrated um so yeah i just i wrote to buddy in uh to drum on it and it got released and then yeah started searching again and found scott pretty quickly which was just uh you know (laughs) thank god kind of thing like um because it's been so long and then yeah we just we jammed and we jammed and we jammed and again we tried out i don't know how many bassists like (laughs) yeah we we tried out so many that we kind of took a break from trying out bassists bassists for a bit (laughs) and we could just got sick of it because every session was we weren't making progress with the music we were just auditioning bassists and and it was just ages because so many of them it just wasn't working they weren't playing sort of you know it, it just wasn't slotting right with us or the personalities weren't clicking sort of thing and i don't know it just became real tedious and it was kind of the band was becoming a bit stagnant we we're just more about auditioning bassists than playing music and then mm-hmm. so um but eventually we found one we found we mark and he completed the lineup and we started to really progress from there which was great but then I guess when did COVID, COVID hit before COVID. we found Mark, I think. So that kind of, it's just yeah. like, oh man, like, but I guess like being in that position where, you know, you know, at that time there was no shows on the horizon whatsoever. So it's kind of like, all right, cool. Let's, let's just, let's find the right basis. Let's put this together and let's like work real hard, hmm. you know, as and when we could. So yeah, in a way, maybe, maybe COVID helped us focus on like, you know, the three of us just getting our shit together and like writing the music we wanted to write and just, yeah, being happy with everything. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of like rehearsal, like with these four songs, a lot of refinement. And I guess because we had nothing else to do, we couldn't do any gigs or anything. And because it took so long to find a bass player that I guess also gave us time to just the two of us refine the parts a lot Mm because that's all we could do when we weren't auditioning people. So yeah, we're pretty happy with it, how it all came together, really, in the end. 
so what I can gather is that like between the first album and this or was simply you are now a real band. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Like it's yeah, it's kind of nice to have that 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 first EP up there because I think there is probably a progression like there's a similar moods, but I think we've probably well it for me it, this this new EP is just totally three dimensional compared mm. to the the original one which is kind of 2d because there just wasn't as much input in well there was you know two times less input kind of thing so now that um yeah the three of us kind of got together and it just uh the whole process just was so much more organic and the re the result was just uh bigger and better i think <laughs> And like the thing with, you know, instrumental music is that a lot of the time it's very abstract and can kind of lack a specific message, obviously, like due to the lack of lyrics and whatnot. I'm not saying it's devoid of thematics or metaphor or anything. Um, that's just kind of what it is. And I think a lot of people sort of make what they will out of out of a, a, an instrumental track, unless it's like, you know, part of a greater uh, story or whatever you know, for me, it's like much more of an emotional experience, but like, you know, besides the sonic influences, you know, do you derive inspiration from other places like, you know, nature, society, emotion, et cetera? I mean, yeah, I think, I think you're right with the, uh, the emotion, uh, kind of aspects, like just the, especially with, with our kind of stuff, like, you know, there's the, the super quiet, delicate kind of, introspective kind of moments and then just the, the all out kind of you know angry i guess right and like when you're playing it you can you can sort of go through those emotions like when you're really hitting it it's like you know all your stress is coming out kind of thing and i like i kind of draw inspiration from film a lot like i love cinematic ambient movies you know like blade runner and just saw june last week and just love those kind of movies where it's more about the cinematography and the atmosphere than it is necessarily about the story. Like the story's there to, to kind of keep you to kind of create a, a sort of a, a an A and B point, you know. Uh, but like I just, yeah, and I like music that kind of does the same thing where it's it's just it's rather than sort of A B A C B finish, it's like more of a journey, more unpredictable, more sort of peaks and valleys you know like mm -hmm. yeah I, I love that kind of stuff music that's just yeah keeps you on your toes right yeah, yeah. i mean i was uh just chilling on the couch today listening to the album and uh, i mean it struck me it was like very goddamn fucking heavy but there's some other parts where it is you know like it hits on those more atmospheric ethereal notes and whatnot but there is like even in the last track, uh, there's a part where, like, you know, you're doing some funky guitar stuff that kind of sounded like a, a little Gojira esque to me, you know. And I, you know, it helps when you throw in those little curveballs and you're not just doing like, you know, the same kind of like, uh, you know, explosions in the sky or the, you know, the thousand ISIS uh, ripoffs that the, that exist and uh, the void that that band <laughs> left behind. Yeah, I think we got a lot of different influences between us. Like, I also listen to a lot of um, like Afrobeat and like funk music. So, like, I'm big on groove as well. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily just you know hard rock sort of drums. I, I like like intricate grooves, contrary rhythms, and that kind of thing. So that probably informs you know a lot of the way I play with the with the band as well. But yeah, we got really like uh, compatible uh, interests in terms of. Uh, musical influences it seems the sound, i would say the, so yeah the sound of the band kind of came together pretty naturally mm -hmm. like we had the we had the first album that james wrote and that was kind of a, a launching point and we just kind of started jamming just kind of improvising to maybe james would come in with like a riff or something or a couple of ideas and we just kind of take that hit the recorder and then just kind of jam for an hour or so and then sift back through the recording and try and find the little gems and piece them together to try and create something that sounded like a piece of music and yeah but you know a bunch of the uh whatever sort of initial riffs like mutated so much over time like you know we've got all the old recordings that'd be kind of fun to go back and listen to like you know how that track started or whatever because it's you know 
just would sound nothing like the finished product and yeah good journeys yeah i and i would agree too like you could see the influence on like on your drumming because uh that's actually something that struck me about the album is like all of the like you can hear all the different time signatures and switching it up in the different styles and i think i feel like drumming is a, a really crucial element to post metal and post rock i i really feel like he, it stands out a lot of the time and I don't know why I don't know if it's because you just have to like work to create that extra layer because it is like just a very like layer type of music and I could be a thousand percent wrong on this but uh, I feel like guitar and uh and the drums almost take like a bit of a front seat sorry Mark to like bass because I feel like I've listened to tons of uh post rock albums and like I I feel like there's not a lot happening with the bass there. Like I kind of feel like a lot of it is um, uh, it's to provide that atmosphere in the background. So it is still serving its purpose as like, you know, the, the rhythm section and holding down the back end and it's creating like that larger wall. But I usually feel like you can hear the guitar and the drums over it because it's, I don't know what the bass is supposed to be like the, the sheets, you know, like just like the comfort fuzz in the background to sort of like, that all this sound is bouncing off of. I don't yeah, know. Mark wants to come on here and just like correct me. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I know what you mean, and I think yeah, like sure, like it, it definitely in a lot of bands it, it is it is just the low end, and you'd miss it if it wasn't there. But it's not necessarily, you know, whatever. But I think you know, I, I was super impressed with Mark and like his mm -hmm. his take on 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 the songs because I, I guess like when he joined maybe Scott and I had a couple of the ideas and we fired them over to him and he sort of came in and you know he'd worked on them at home and it was just like oh shit like and again is the, it added another dimension and I think like mm. yeah because I think actually Mark is um he's a guitarist um kind of first off mm. so um you know he he maybe was a, I, I don't know like a bit more melodic with his bass parts I don't know especially in like um like projections yeah like super creative and um and your point on the on the drumming like 100 percent there's the the old uh you know your band's only as good as your drummer 100 percent <laughs> for me <laughs> like and luckily we have scott so <laughs> <laughs> um you know it's um you know there's a, there's a lot of a lot of space i guess in 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 the stuff we're doing and you know scott is able to like you know, fill all those gap without going way over the top and just, mm -hmm. yeah, just add so much more, more to it. But yeah. And, and I think as you were saying, Dylan, like um, the lack of a singer just, yeah, leaves room to, that, that needs to be filled and we couldn't just be alternating between grooves. I mean, we could, it'd sound fine, but like just to embellish bits here and there to kind of give emphasis to transitions and, also just you know listening out for what james is doing and trying to play off the melodies he's doing and playing a complimentary way like a lot of the fills initially like and, and beats and stuff like were kind of jammy but it, by the time we got down to recording it was all pretty intentional most of it i sort of had had an idea of exactly what i wanted you know in terms of this fill goes here and whatnot like and not to be too robotic about it but it was just like that like the general vibe like this mm -hmm. kind of a fill will go here but um because it kind of served the music because the pieces they're kind of like that they're kind of composed in a certain way for a certain reason you know like to, to give the the narrative of each track so it's like if i played it differently every time it wouldn't be the same track <laughs> mm -hmm. but there's, there's room for embellishment but um but yeah it's definitely thought put into each sort of part for sure do you craft your songs out of jams or do you try to bring like solid ideas to the table when you're writing jams yeah, like the whole the whole EP was, you know, Scott and I had like I'd bring a few, you know, rough riffs in or even come up with like a riff just in the jam space, like, you know, or maybe maybe Scott would just start playing something and I'd just oh I'm gonna play this over that and yeah, that was really how it came together. Like like every every single track. Um and I remember uh the uh, the last track, Business Trip, that um came together super quick like the three of us just mm -hmm. kind of like and for me that's it's probably my kind of favorite track on the record like just because it came together so quick and so organically and and like kind of out of nothing it was we were just in there and it's like oh i guess 
should we like write some music and <laughs> I, I don't even know how it came around but it exists and it's like oh cool <laughs> yeah yeah definitely jams like the thing about it is you just come up with stuff that you never would have otherwise come up with like because mm-hmm. you just you, you're playing off each other's like performances or whatever you're playing in the moment it's like if you're sitting there by yourself playing you're you're you only have yourself to play off as feedback but if you've got one or two other musicians in the room they're doing stuff that you never would have thought of because you don't play those instruments or you're not playing them at the time and so it's just like there's all this extra feedback and there's constant sort of ideas coming and going and then it's just at some point you you can't usually with the jams we kind of start and it's a bit kind of you kind of find your footing a little bit and then you get into the groove after a few minutes and you can kind of stop thinking about shit and then you just kind of let it go and it's kind of more like a stream of consciousness thing Mm -hmm. and then 40 minutes have gone by and if also just not having restrictions not being like okay i can't change the beat here because that would be weird just fuck it i'm gonna change the beat here and that could you know it could fall on its ass but it could also you know turn into a cool idea a cool transition or something like that and then when you go back and listen to it later the recording when you're not playing just as kind of a you know a, a listener you kind of hear things in a, in a way that you didn't hear them when you were playing and you can kind of hear how things might go together and they kind of cut it up in the Ableton or whatever program and arrange it into a basic structure. And then next time you come in, kind of, okay, we've got this rough blueprint, let's play through that and then gradually kind of refine it, kind of chip away like a sculpture. That's what it's yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> like. An audio sculpture. An audio sculpture. <laughs> Has, has James or Mark ever just been like, Scott, don't change the beat. <laughs> yeah. Four to the floor. That's it. <laughs> Crash on the one every time. Yeah. We need another 10 minutes of that. <laughs> yeah. They haven't done that. No, I think, I think. That's why yeah. I'm still in the band. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all like, like super open with one another's ideas. And, you know, no one has ever, you know, shot, shot another guy down like, Oh no no! Don't do that. That's that's bullshit. Don't do that. Like mm. you know, that's never happened. With it's like, it's like okay, that's an idea. Cool. Let's run that. Let's run it a few times. Let's. Oh, why don't we try it again? But you know, tweak it so it's kind of this, not that. And you know, just yeah. I think we're all just um, we're all pretty pretty easy going, which is nice. There's there's um, there's you know there's no kind of egos or anything we just want to make some nice music and all have a nice time you know <laughs> like yeah and um, that, that's that's like all because we're so you know because we are carefree in that way and and sort of willing to explore each other's ideas it like it, it emphasizes everyone's ability to express their ideas they don't feel like oh i can't say what i think should happen here because old mate will just shoot me down because we always do what he wants to do anyway <laughs> like yeah yeah so right. i've been in some bands like that before and it and it does kind of stifle the creativity a little bit but it's also if that's the way the band's set up and there's like a key songwriter or whatever then that's that's how it is you kind of enter it under those terms but mm-hmm. i just prefer these kind of bands where it's more free form and everyone kind of has an input and it's kind of the result is the the collective's sort of hard work (laughs) yeah and it is a better result and you know certainly like you know i guess there's times you know someone throws an idea out there and like you know 100 percent, i would have been like whatever not sure but it's like well let's you know let's try it and we run it a few times and and suddenly it's like oh oh no no that that totally works like whereas i think in some situations like someone might just yeah shoot that idea down straight away and and it's like yeah you know before giving it a chance Yeah. yeah yeah So you'll have to give me some uh, specifics here because you're not um, you're not exactly the Canadians that I that I thought you were based on your accent. So like, have you are you born and raised in uh, Canada or are you uh, did you move there? So I've been here like six years now, moved over and still here, just uh, enjoying the fine fresh air that BC has to offer. Yeah, and my uh, my partner is a uh, uh, Canadian, so. That's what brought me here. <laughs> ah, right on. All right. Well, all right. So in the time that you have, like, you know, been in Canada, obviously Canada has its own history of heavy, you know, music, you know, obviously, you know, foreigners, you know, Neil Young, Rush and all that shit. But, you know, specifically in like metal, you get the classics, Devin Townsend, Cataclysm, Voivod. But there's like been a huge output from like 
the more underground Canadian scene. You know, some of my favorites are Two Mold, VHS, uh, Black Wizard, Vile Creature, Backwash, which is not metal, but there's there is certainly the DNA that connects them. Um, you know, like what are your takes on like the Canadian metal scene, or like I guess even like the the Vancouver BC? Because I feel like Vancouver is like a you know it's a city. It's definitely a stop on a tour. Uh, yeah, I'll let James I, I, I wish that one. <laughs> I, I, I wish I wish more bands stopped here, man. So yeah. often they get they get as far as Seattle and then just fucking turn around uh. and go back or whatever. It's like, but but no, I think um yeah, like it's there's a there's an awesome scene here and like COVID has really like just sort of screwed a lot of things. But pre COVID, like yeah, it's you know because it's a it's a big city but it's not like you know i was living in london in england mm -hmm. and it's like it's just so so vast you know trying to connect with whatever part of a scene it, it, it felt kind of hard there but here there's a, a pretty um pretty sort of nicely cut out um heavy heavy music scene with a lot of like wicked local bands it's nice to you know we're hopefully slowly kind of becoming a bit of a part of that now but um yeah, like some some of the local guys, like I know Wayne Grow and um, Dead Quiet Baptists are like they're half Seattle, half mm -hmm. Vancouver, I believe. Like many more that I can't think of off the top of my head, but um, we hunt buffalo. bunch of um, bunch of good stuff going on here, and just yeah, need um, need all the restrictions to disappear so we can you know go to shows and people don't have to sit down and watch metal bands <laughs> like in a jazz club <laughs> yeah <clears throat> also shout outs to previous guest of the show john michael it was a very cool project domestic qualm i mean obviously you know besides the fucking shitty two years we've had i mean like have you all been enjoying canada i'm i'm no stranger to visiting um to visiting the great white north but i've never been uh far west uh in in canada i've only been as far as uh toronto and uh, some of the other and uh, some of the other cities in that area. Yeah, I mean, it's a good time. It's a good time on the west coast. It's uh, you have the beaches in the summer. You got the mountains in the winter. You got all the snow. It's um, thankfully BC. You know, didn't get too crazy with COVID. So like, yeah, we went out and did a trip through the Rockies and you know saw all that like vastness, which was mm -hmm. you know kind of scratching the surface of Canada but yeah certainly you know the, I guess the reason we came here like me and my wife was to just yeah explore and see all this stuff yeah the nature in the wilderness here is pretty breathtaking coming from the flattest country on earth <laughs> where our version of a mountain is what you guys here in North America would would call a molehill or something but <laughs> it's like <laughs> seriously like i i'm still like after two years here so far it's like i see a mountain and it's just i didn't think i'd ever be impressed by a mountain because it's just a bunch of rock right but it's it's pretty impressive pretty beautiful <laughs> pretty majestic you know um so yeah we've been doing a lot of hikes trying to get out in the nature when we can um also just along the coast is beautiful as well the ocean and Mm -hmm. See, seen orcas and stuff like that just off the coast and seals and all the wildlife eagles hawks it's all good it's beauty it's certainly <laughs> not a uh not the worst place on the on the earth to you know ride out a global pandemic you know like, cannabis is legal too so that's great i'm very happy and, about and that. there's like <laughs> 10 times there's this like 10 times fewer things that will kill you than there are in australia <laughs> yeah i actually i was reading a a, a a news headline the other day um they found a so the funnel web spider is is kind of like the most feared uh, spider in australia evil um, yeah they're pretty an pretty evil, evil. creature <laughs> yeah <laughs> but they found one uh that's twice the size of, of like a regular funnel web so they're getting bigger now so that's uh, that's uh, cool it's almost so like more <laughs> comparable to like a tarantula but it's a highly poisonous funnel web spider with like fangs like you know like an inch long Oh. So it's just pretty horrifying. Looking forward to to visiting back there at some point. Somebody call John Jeez. Goodman. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's awful. I mean, like whatever you know, tarantulas like scary, but they're probably not gonna like kill you. But like those yeah. things, like I I I've been 
basically was taught from birth to be terrified of those things and, and many other horrifying things that live in uh, the great nation of Australia. Seriously, man. Just, yeah, nightmarish nature. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, no one's died from a snake or spider bite. Uh, well, I mean, maybe a, a couple have, but for the most part, people don't die from them anymore because every hospital has antivenom. Mm -hmm. So as long as you get to a hospital, as long as you're not super isolated out in the desert or something, um, if you get to a hospital within an hour or so, you, you probably will live. So that's good. Before your skin melts off or whatever. Yeah, before, your yeah. blood, before your blood turns to plastic. <laughs> blood turns to plastic? Yeah. That would be really, uh, that would be insane if somehow the spiders not only got bigger, but when they bite you, you they turn your your, uh, your blood and your skin into yeah. plastic. I saw this YouTube video and they poured, I think it was a snake venom. They poured snake venom into a, like a vial with human blood and it just turned it to like, it looked like it, it solidified it almost. It was weird. Which is, that's just horrifying. That's what it does to your whole body. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Let, let's go tour Australia, like the Outback. Yeah. Let's go do yeah, that. Let's do it. <laughs> A lot of good metal bands over there. Yeah. You could do it. Good scene. Good scene. So now, uh, are you guys hockey fans or are you uh, cricket fans or are you curling fans? <laughs> or are you just like, fuck all that noise? Yeah, fuck all that noise. For yeah, me, I'm not man. a big like... sports guy. I like playing sports like casually, but I don't really follow any. Mm, fair. I Go went on. to a hockey game. Uh, I went like uh, as like a plus one for a buddy's like uh, like work Christmas party, and there was like a a box and like free food and beer, and I had a real nice time. But I think it may have been the three free uh, food and beverages that uh, that I was really there for. Hey. The sports. I think the sports that I like aren't really that many. You know, uh, like big spectator sports like i'm a big fan of skating and um mm. like snowboarding and stuff like that but um you don't really see much of that on tv unless you have the cable you know yeah well who has the <laughs> budget for that anymore that's right <laughs> <laughs> unplug well obviously you have you know the album's out but are you are you working on anything else at the moment um is there anything you know we can expect from you in the future i would hope so yeah we would hope so too yeah well we have uh we got a show coming up um early december in town um at the railway 10th, 10th of december fun. december 10th yeah um and yeah like we have a bunch of um you know every time we jam we just we record just whatever the hell comes out we have a bunch of stuff that i guess um we'll look at you know putting together into uh into just a bunch more music but i guess we've been pretty focused on this record for the past uh, i don't know man where do we record it like yeah <laughs> or for yeah well i guess yeah the writing but since since we finished recording you know there's a lot of sort of post-production whatever that that has to go on behind the scenes and it's it's super super nice that it's out and yeah we'll just be sort of cracking on and yeah making some more music but yeah definitely kind of just jamming and just trying to rack up a library of improvised music that we can then sort through and pick out some you know try and structure together some new tunes that's the goal cool um you guys been listening to anything lately that you've been really digging i listened to a lot of yob clearing yeah. the path to ascend um the the first track with the alan watts quotes and whatnot there's the riffs on that are just so fucking heavy and uh i just can't get enough i just listen to it while i'm you know pretending to work and uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah a lot of those guys a bit of russian circles and um some of sugar i love sugar sugar's great looking forward to seeing them again next year yeah yob too they just they're doing a, a four nights at saint vitus in brooklyn they're doing a oh, residency oh, going, what? yeah i'm That's going dreamy yeah, it's gonna be. I I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going the first night and the last night, so it'll. Nice. So it's gonna be like you get there, you get to see all the hiccups, and then on the four, on the last night, you get to see them be dog ass tired. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Nice. But you know, like a well oiled machine at that point. Just I would say so. Yeah. Oh man, that sounds good. Yeah. Oh yeah, you must get so many good shows living down there. I mean, it, I don't like to use the word, but it is a blessed thing. Like yeah. 
you get you're you get always guaranteed to stop everything yeah yeah, yeah almost always sure. guaranteed to stop i've actually noticed a few more t- tours now will do like a long island stop and sometimes won't hit the city or they'll do like albany or something like that um and they and then they'll just skip over new york because i don't know maybe they played new york like the year before and they didn't have a great turnout or whatever yeah, right. so yeah. It can it is unpredictable here. That's definitely mm-hmm. for certain. I've definitely gone to see bands where it's like full house, and then I've gotten to see them other times where it's been kind of light, and you know, just is yeah, what right. it is. Mm-hmm. Do you think mm-hmm. it's because people have too many too many options? There's just so Absolutely. much on yeah. every. Yeah, night, I but... mean, like when I saw Windhand, like I, 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 Old Man Gloom was playing the same night, and I remember oh, seeing man. the ad, and I was like, oh, I might go see that. Oh, I'm, I can't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's a bummer <laughs> you know it's like a it's like a good problem to have yeah true for sure yeah so yeah. like i avoid that because i don't go to a lot of i don't go to a ton of like hardcore and like punk shows and you know but if you're someone who really likes hardcore and also really digs metal and you know going to see all the local metal bands then like yeah it can be it can be kind of complicated yeah, tough decisions sure. yeah you can do it if you want but I, I i going back to shows has been weird let's put it that way yeah, yeah it's definitely it's be weird. it takes it's a little bit of an adjustment you know so but but that being said you know obviously i'm i'm thrilled that i get to get to experience them again totally. for sure man i can't wait till it's because it's still not really i wouldn't say it's back to normal here at all it's uh they're happening but it's you know limited capacity like no dancing overall no like, flyers it's like it's super dystopian, um, <laughs> but you know we'll get there, and yeah, looking forward to good to catch up show. on some concerts. Oh yeah, yeah. You have, like a, you have to have like a lunch, like a lunch lady come in with a whistle, be like, no touching, no touching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what have I been? Let's see. Um, new Emma Ruth Rundle <laughs> album. It's absolutely fantastic. It's fucking crying while listening to it. Oh nice. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's just it's it's just it's like it's very it kind of reminds me of Yab. I mean, it hits kind of in that same way, you know. Mm. I think it, it it might even be a bit more so than that. Um, and then uh, new uh, new album by Spectral Lore, the Greek one man uh, oh, wow. black metal band oh. uh, friend. Previous guest of the show, Irene, turned me on to them, and it's fuck kick. It's kick ass, and it's like I don't I don't know how crazy you guys are about black metal, but yeah, these are not short black metal songs. They're very long, a lot of different things to change up the tempos. And um, you hear a lot of different sounds in there. And I, I like some of that old shitty sound to it, but sometimes I think it can be a bit much. Same thing for like the really technical kind of sure. all with all the, the choirs and all that shit can yeah, be yeah. a bit much. So this kind of hits like right in the middle where I'm like, oh, this is this is really fucking rad. Okay. Well, if you're if you're into some uh, some Vancouver black metal, you should check out uh, Ulvik, U L V I K. There's some uh, some some local friends of mine. All they right, just they released an EP recently. Yeah, I will check them it's, out. It's it's I like it, but uh, it's for me. It's yeah, I'm not super into the black metal side of things, but it's uh, yeah, it's pretty rad. Awesome, I'll check it out. Is there anything you'd like to plug or promote? Obviously, album is out. Go buy it. Yep. Yeah. Go buy the album. Go uh, get it on Bandcamp up there. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's also, there's a, um, we did a bunch of um, like live studio recordings when we were tracking the, the EP. So you can like, you know, go to our Instagram and there's, you know, all the links for, you know, these videos. You can check us uh, actually playing the, the tracks uh if you can't make it to the show you know there was a good um, kind of uh doubling up on our studio time to re- when we recorded mm-hmm. the ep we james had the idea to do like live videos and we hired a friend of his who makes he's a filmmaker and had like some pretty decent uh you know footage taken while we played the songs and recorded recorded them live like separate to the ep recording mm-hmm. um yeah and it's turned out to be great because it's been good sort of fodder to help the promo yeah uh for the for the release you know spread out the release of the videos and use that as kind of material to kind of get people interested and and aware of us it's you know it's obviously you know an ep comes out and it's like cool but it's i think like having um 
chucking these videos out beforehand so people can sort of see see the band and you know see them playing live and it's like oh cool let's let's see what comes next kind of thing hmm. um and yeah like shout a big shout out and thank you to jesse gander at um brain city recorders who you know did us did us all proud with his audio wizardry um yeah it was a good time good time and shout out to Mark, who I promise is not a bad bass player. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's definitely solid. Huge shout out to Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry you couldn't be with us. I uh, go check out the album. It kicks a lot of ass. Um, thank you guys for coming on. And the album's called The Surge. Bandcamp, Instagram. Go check out all of Matador's stuff by the album. Thanks for coming on, and maybe you'll get down to New Jersey and try some uh questionable uh, <laughs> uh process meat, meat. <laughs> some not spam yeah, yeah some not spam i can't i can't wait man Let's sweet that. no thanks for having us on dylan really appreciate it yeah of yeah, course I much appreciate it. my pleasure
Yeah. I don't. I was really expecting you guys to be more Canadian. Well, yeah. so this is this is where we need Mark. He's like our Canadian, like covered in tattoos, dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> like uh, but, I'm, um... I, I've got all my Canada jokes in my the back of my pocket in my back pocket. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm talking to two British guys. <laughs> Actually, what? one Brit and one Australian guy. So uh... ah. <laughs> I should have figured it out. You're gonna say H like H. Yeah, I am. I'm am gonna do that because it's the right way. <laughs> like like Z is the right way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Z. That is a weird one, isn't it? <laughs> I do like it. Honestly, it's yeah. a it's a good. Um, uh it's a good bit of uh linguistics yeah yeah australians call uh you got uh, you guys call like slides we call them slippery dips that's fun slippery dips <laughs> I mean, why i don't know i didn't come up with it but that's just how i grew up it was did you just need a... to be that different yeah we do we gotta it's gotta be ridiculous or like really short we just gotta shorten everything that's kind of our thing i guess because it's like too hot and we gotta conserve energy or something <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I I don't have any room to talk. I'm from New Jersey. We call things all we we have multiple names for the same thing in the same state. That's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. that'll get confusing. That'll get confusing. 